Good Monday morning. Previously, we have looked at iterators, and today I would like to look at asynchronous iterators. Asynchronous iterators are pretty much the same as normal iterators. The difference is that they return promises. I am your host, MPJ, and you are watching Fun Fun Function. Today is one of those days where uh, I'm tired, but in a very good way. I'm feeling, uh, you know, relaxed. I'm feeling okay about just recording a mellow video. It's like my uh, my energy level is going to be low, but my mood is going to be high. And my voice is going to be a lot like this. It's going to be... Mm. Hello, I feel a little bit like a nighttime radio host. Hello, Wayne. Why are, why are you calling us this fine Monday night? What's on your mind? If you are not familiar with promises, this video is going to confuse the hell out of you. So luckily I've made an episode on that. If you're not familiar with them, you can check it out in the episode description. There's a link to it. Also, this video builds a bit on top of the iterators video. So might be a little bit confusing if you haven't watched that. And there's a link to that one in the episode description as well. All right, first I'm going to show you a fake database that I've written for this episode. It's not very big, it has two tables, uh, customers and foods. Doesn't hold a lot of data either, each table just has three rows. So uh, uh, let me create a store here. Store, create, create, store. This is all fake. And then I just go store.get um, and which table? Cust customer. Customer uh, one. What's that? That's a customer. His name is John. And then just what, what about customer three? That's that's Kim. Is there a customer? Is there a customer four? No, there isn't. What's the favorite foods of Kim? Uh, food. Okay, it's apple and carrot. What's the... Is, is there a fourth row? No, it's undefined. What's the favorite food of, of John? Cakes and waffle. Let me just quickly show you the code for the fake database. It's just... It's create store. It has this constant with a bunch of f fake data. And then there's a get method to get, like, the data from the, the, the tables here. It's just pff, a fake thing. All right, so I'm going to write something that uses iterators. Like normal iterators, we're not going to use async iterators quite yet. We are going to create a customer's object, which is responsible for getting the customers and gluing them together with their favorite food. So it's a kind of like a data access object. And here's the interesting part. We're going to make this uh, customer's object iterable so that we can uh, four of our customers. <laughs> iterator is just like the ones we've seen in previous episodes except that it uses this this fake database that we're uh, we're using so uh, it uh, it has a customers ah, so it has this customers object uh, it has this uh, symbol iterator property which is a, uh, a factory function which will return another object which is this uh, iterator uh, and the iterator has a property called next, which is a function that you can call to uh, get the next customer. So it just keeps iterating here until it doesn't have any customers. Um, like it finds the, the fourth customer row is, oh, it's empty, and then it returns done. Uh, but before it, uh, it's done, it returns these, these iteration objects, which that had, has a value property, which happens to be the customer. And it also has a done property, which might be uh, which, which is false if it's not done iterating, but uh, done when it's like at the end of 
the stuff we want to iterate over, which is the customers. Nothing here should confuse you. If it does, go back and check the first iterator video, again linked in the episode description. However, we are now going into Mordor. We are going to use async iterables, and that is a feature that is so new that it's not in Node.js yet. Oh my god, that makes me so anxious. New things just makes me, like, the I feel sharp pains going down my, my arm. Eh, don't worry about it. You, you, should, you should just remember what Wayne Gretzky said. I skate where the puck is going to be, not where it's been. Mm, I'm suspecting here that you are going to say that we need Bobble to make this work. Mm, yes, that's true, but most development teams are using Bobble anyway. And many people are watching this from the future. So this might even need Bobble. It might just work for you. But this is not the future, so we are going to install the npm, inst npm install. And this is a really catchy name. Bobble plugin transform <laughs> async generator functions. And we also need the Bobble uh, preset latest while we're at it. And let's have a look inside the package.json. And uh, depending on your development setup, you might need to add this to Webpack, to add plugins. Um, we're using Quokka uh, to, that's a nifty inline evaluation plugin that you see me using. Uh, we're gonna configure that. Um, uh, I'm gonna tell Bobble, uh, we're gonna use JSON. <laughs> I'm gonna tell it to use the ES2017 preset and we wanted to use the plugin. Plugin. And was an array. And we want this thing here. That. Oops. Cool. And now I should be able to just restart Quokka. Actually, we haven't actually tried this. Let's for uh, of no, hang on uh, for uh, const customer of customers uh, customer. Let's see what that gives us. All right, that works. So iterating over uh, stuff in databases like this—that's uh, that's interesting, uh, but. This is synchronous and pretty much everything in JavaScript is a sync. Um, so so how, can we make this a sync? Well, I happen to have written an async store. I'm just gonna show that to you. Uh, this is exactly the same. It's just that I've added this fake delay here. 500 milliseconds uh, delay. And then it uh, wraps that in a promise so it's it's it just the same thing but delayed and it's promise based and the delay is here like it just it's it's a promise it just wraps set timeout in, in a promise interface okay let's go back to the code right now by the way this is stuck in an infinite loop because nothing is working i'm gonna just comment that out for a little bit all right so in order to embark on our, on our async journey, we're going to make uh, our next function of our iterator an async function. If you are unfamiliar with the async uh, keyword and uh, the, the, you need to familiarize yourself with that as well, otherwise this will all be wow. So there's actually a video on that in the episode description as well. Having our next function async, that's nice because it allows us to await these, um, these now async uh, uh, methods on the store. And that's everything we need to do in order to make our uh, iterable customers uh, asynchronous. Now, these are async iterators uh, because an async uh, function always returns a promise. So that's, that's the interface. Oh, I just realized the mic has dropped shit. That's professional of me. However, while uh, customers are now properly async iterable, uh, our for loop here uh, does not know uh, about 
Like it doesn't know how to do a sync iteration. However, there is a new thing called a for await that actually does. However, we're not quite done because, you know, like doesn't make sense to use await outside an asynchronous function. Like we're just like we're just using it for a weight plainly here and that doesn't really make sense. We need to do it in an async function. So let's actually do that. Async function. Sorry mobile users, but we need to zoom out a little bit, a little bit for the benefit of some very precious screen real estate. And I'm going to just do this here and I'm going to execute this as an iffy inline evaluated function something and it executes. It works, it works, it works. So you see here that uh, even though the fake store is now asynchronous, we now uh, we, we're still able to uh, iterate over them using the for await keyword and we get the customers just like we did before. What the for await keyword does is it, it's not particularly magical, really. Uh, let me let's me actually just write that out uh, without the for loop. Um, let's uh, let's iterator. Uh, let's get this iterator. Let's create an iterator of symbol dot iterator. Let's get that out. Uh, Uh, let me comment comment out the for await loop for a while. And then we have like iterator, the rate door dot next. It's gonna give us a uh, a promise or a, like a promise of an iteration. You can see here that it has a value and a false. Uh, and uh, with it with the first customer here as the value. Um, so like const customer customer one and then we just do a wait map and uh, value like does does that give us the customer yeah and then we just do like this customer three like that gives us the customer that that is what um uh, what the for await loop does under the hood. It's it's not particularly complicated. Well, it's wrong of me to say it's not complicated. There are a lot of moving parts here, but it's not super magical or anything like that. Oh, it's it's actually super magical. But it's... Never mind, this is what it does. <laughs> That's the for await of keyword and, and async iterators. If anything confused you, then that's good. It probably should because this is new things. So please post that comment down below and me and a fellow viewer will surely help you out. You have just watched an episode of Fun Fun Function. I release these every Monday morning, 0800 GMT. But you will forget that, so you should subscribe so that you don't miss it. Or what the hell, you can just watch another episode right now by clicking there. I am MPJ. Until next Monday morning, stay curious.